Hi everybody, this is Life with Leonard and welcome to another episode. Now today I'm going to tackle a serious topic. Now please note that this video is by no means intended to create panic, but rather awareness of the very real possibility of a coronavirus resurgence here in South Africa and I guess it's applicable all over the world. Now coronavirus is a reality and it is still very much with us. Whether we like it or not, whether some accept it or not, or conspiracy theorists believe in it or not. Now a spike in coronavirus cases might force many countries, including our own here in South Africa, to go back into hard lockdown. Now from personal experience over here, that is the one thing that I know we as South Africans want to avoid and prevent at all costs. Because lockdown and believe it or not, I mean, we have all our, we all of us have our own stories, the own impact that it had on, on our lives, on businesses, on the economy, etc. And another hard lockdown will have disastrous effect. That is just a fact and a reality. It will be like the last nail into the coffin. Now I'm talking here level four, level five lockdown here in South Africa. Well, that's how we classify them from level five, four, three, two, and we are at the moment currently on level one. But going back to level four and level five, I mean, that will be disastrous to our economy. It will be, it will be the final nail in the coffin. And we should do everything in our power as citizens of this country, and I guess citizens of the world, to prevent that. And the good news is, and that's, why this, that's what this video is all about, is that we can prevent this. Collectively, we can achieve it. We can stop the resurgence as citizens of our beautiful and beloved country. So I'm going to share with you the six things that I think you should know and what we can do. And I'm going to mix them all up. But these are the six things. Firstly, I'm going to share with you the statistics of where we are right now in South Africa. And why, secondly, why we are seeing a resurgence of COVID-19 cases. And thirdly, where the hotspots are, referring to the provinces. And number four, why it is so important, maybe now more than ever, that we as the people of South Africa work together to fight this virus and contain the outbreaks and prevent a resurgence. And number five, what I'm going to cover is the effect of a resurgence on our health system and the pressure it puts on our medical staff. And number six, what we can do as citizens to curb this. Now, today is the 2nd of December, 2020. So the statistics that I'm gonna share with you are based on yesterday's stats. So that is the that was the 1st of December. So just bear that in mind. And just on that point, I might, I might just also add that the government in our country has been, in my opinion, been very, very good when it comes to communicating and keeping us in the loop and up to date of uh, around what's happening, statistics uh, around COVID-19, etc. We also have an app here that you can download for free. I don't even think you need uh, data to, to run the app. Um, I'm speaking under correction. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe you can just leave in the comment section below uh, whether I'm right or not. Uh, I think it is that way. And I must say that I'm always in the loop. I always know what's going on. So I will encourage all of my fellow South African citizens, those, who have, those of you who have the means to download the app. So let me just share the statistics of where we are at the moment. A total of 792,299 cases have been reported with 2,295 new cases in the past 24 hours. And on the recovery front, more than 732,000 people have recuperated so far. There are 21,644 reported deaths, 109 in just the past day. Now, the accuracy of this data can always be disputed, but that's not really the point. The point is one death is one death too many. And we should be really concerned about that as citizens of this country and citizens of the world, as I keep on mentioning. You know, it's when somebody dies, it's somebody's father, mother, uncle, aunt, brother, sister, friend, colleague. So it's always, I mean, when it hits you, you really realize how serious this is. And prevention 
is better than cure. So why do we see a resurgence in COVID-19 cases? You know, I think as human beings, we fear the unknown. In the beginning, we were so paranoid. I'm, an, I'm speaking about personal experience. My wife used to send me to the shop when we were still uh, under hard lockdown, level five and level four. We used to go out, I mean, maybe even once a month, like, uh, once a couple of weeks. I can't even recall exactly. But before I get, uh, I got into the house, I had to sanitize myself, remove all, I mean, I don't want to say remove all my clothes because that might sound funny, but it is true. She didn't allow me with my clothes in the house. I'm not lying to you. It is true. I had to wash my shoes, all my clothes. I had to take a shower. I mean, where, where I walked into the house, the pathway that I followed was sanitized and I had to do it myself. I mean, I sanitized the gate, the car, everything, all the individual items that I bought were sanitized. I mean, we were just paranoid because we fear the unknown. It's in our human nature. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. But afterwards, what happened? We fall back into our routine. We become complacent. And that's just how, and that's one of the reasons why these resurgence happens, because we become complacent. We fall back into our routine. We, we don't wear our mask all the time when we go out. Or when we go out, where people do wear their mask, they don't wear it properly. I mean, how many times have you seen people wear their mask, but they don't even cover their nose? I mean, or I've seen people wearing their mask around their chin. I mean, it doesn't even cover the mouth or the nose at all. In the beginning, we didn't go out to visit friends. We kept our social distance, all of those things. But think about it. We've become complacent. We fall back into our routine. And that's why the resurgence is, is coming. It's almost here. And you know, just another thing. If, if I had to ask you, when last have you heard anybody cough? A simple cough. I mean, when you're out, out and about in the shops or in the street, I can't remember. I can't even remember when last I've coughed. Or when last I've heard anybody coughed. I mean, and just on that point, did you get the flu this year? Do you know anybody who got the flu? It's like my son said the other day, he said, Dad, they are too scared to get the flu because the connotation to it. But I'm not a medical profession, a professional. I'm not a medical professional. But what do you think? Why didn't you get the flu? Could it be perhaps because we always sanitize our hands, that our hands doesn't contaminate us? Could it be that we're always wearing a mask and I mean, there, there is no viruses infiltrating our bodies and our, attacking our immune system. Could it be? I'm sure it is. And that's exactly how we prevent this coronavirus. And that's what we should keep on doing. It's as simple as that. Now, the hotspots are, and that's referring to the provinces uh, where there is a definite resurgence in these coronavirus cases, are in the Western Cape. That's the province where I reside and the Eastern Cape. Now, the challenging thing and very interesting between these two provinces specifically is that there's a lot of uh, interprovincial travel during the December holidays uh, coming up within the next week or two. So that's going to be very challenging to authorities. But that doesn't mean, and yeah, I'm speaking to the nine, to the other provinces, that doesn't mean that they can relax. That doesn't mean that you, they can let their guard down. We should all be vigilant. We should all follow the guidelines set out by government on what we should do and can do to prevent this resurgence. So why is it so important that we as citizens of the country should maybe now more than ever do everything in our ability to prevent another lockdown, uh, to prevent another resurgence of this coronavirus pandemic? You know that what will happen should we go into another lockdown well, the economy, of course, is the one big factor here, but people's health and safety of everyone is paramount. But the reality is we, it would be disastrous for our economy and the forecast isn't good at all. The important sectors and pillars of our economy like tourism, retail, food and beverages, it has already been badly affected this year and this is not going to get better anytime soon. And it'll take a long time to recover. I mean, I'm taking it just from me. Um, in, in my own business, I'm in real estate and it's been really tough and it's going to take 
a while to recover. I mean, luckily for me, I've been in the business for, for many, many moons, so it might be easier, a little bit easier for me, but I, I'm just thinking about my colleagues or those who are new in the inter industry, or maybe those who didn't, who didn't manage their finances properly because nobody knew. And you know, our government and another uh, plus for them has really given a lot of support and help to small businesses, to households, tax reliefs, and I mean, the list goes on. I can't even remember all of them. But I also know for sure that the fiscus of our country won't be able to bear and won't be able to handle another serious lockdown. And that's why we should think about, you should think about the ripple effect. And don't feel awkward. Don't feel uncomfortable when you walk up to somebody and say, excuse me, sir or ma'am, can you just maybe make sure that you wear a mask? or please wear your mask properly, or please, please keep a safe distance from me. It, it, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. And we need to put our foot down and do these little things. Because, you know, w w when you are somewhere in the middle of nowhere, you, you don't think that your actions will have an effect of, on everybody around you and people not even in your town, in your city, in your province, or even in your country. But it has. It's a virus. It's real and it is here. And that's why we should be so careful and we should ensure that we do what is required of us. The fight of COVID-19 is in the hands of communities. And where communities fail, the whole society fails. And if we talk about the effect of uh, a resurgence on our health system and the pressure on our medical staff, I mean, you would know that our health system here in South Africa was already exhausted for months on end. And I mean, we don't have the best health system either. And as a South African, you, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. During the surge in July and August this year, South Africa would record 10,000 to 12,000 infections a day. But cases declined to between 800 and 1,500 in September and October 2020. But now cases are again increasing daily from 2,800 to 3,300. And just to quote what our Minister of Health, Dr. Zwelin Kizi, said at a media briefing in the Eastern Cape, he said that fatigue and physiosocial strain on medical staff is huge and that more health workers are being infected with the virus and are going into self-isolation while others are taking leave from work. I mean, these are workers who work so hard throughout the year and that a lot of health workers has been left traumatized after seeing their colleagues either infected or having passed on. And to make people understand, and that's so important, that if they do not adhere to measures of COVID-19, such as wearing a mask or sanitizing, that the numbers will rise. And lastly is, what can we do as citizens to curb this? Now, by the looks of things, coronavirus is not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, is going to be with us over the holidays and beyond. So I'm going to share with you the following things that I think and I believe we can do to curb the spread of coronavirus and prevent a resurgence thereof. So number one is wearing a mask properly is of life-saving importance. You must wear your mask at all times when outside of your home. There can be no exceptions. You must avoid crowded and confined spaces at all costs. This is where super spreader events take place. You must urgently reconsider hosting all non-essential gatherings of people this year, especially indoor gatherings with poor ventilation. You must ensure that there is good ventilation at all times whenever you're in public. The virus do droplets spread by air in confined spaces. You must wash your hands regularly with soap and water or use sanitizer. And if you feel sick, you should not leave your home unless it is to get healthcare treatment. Now, I know this is not easy, but we have to do it. We have to endure. Together, we can make a difference. And I know it's going to be very challenging to explain this to children. I'm actually busy with an episode, and please look out for it. it it's, it's coming soon. Um, on questions children will ask about Christmas and how we as adults, as their parents, should answer them. But just by doing these things that I just shared with you, this will arguably be the best Christmas present that you can give. 
to your loved ones. Thank you so much, everybody, for once again joining me on today's episode. I really and sincerely hope that this episode was of value to you. Please share it widely. Like and share this video and leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it is really very easy. You can just hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And please remember to hit the all notifications and that way you will be notified whenever I upload new content. Thank you so much and I will see you soon. Bye for now.